Joining me now is Latasha Brown, co-founder of Black Voters Matter, and Alicia Garza, co-founder of the Black Lives Matter movement and principal of the Black to the Future Action Fund. Thank you, uh, my friends, for being here, sisters. I appreciate you. And I want to start with you, Alicia, because you have um, a, a pretty groundbreaking poll out. This is a, I don't want you to talk a little bit about the poll overall, but this is one of the findings from the Black to the Future Action Fund poll. Um, and it is the largest re recurring poll of black adults. And it says here 48 percent of respondents are dissatisfied uh, with the direction of the country, dissatisfied in general. They think the country's going in the wrong direction. Were you able to determine or so far? Have you been able to determine how much of that has to do with the loss of women's rights? Joy, first of all, it's so good to be here with you and my sister, Latasha. Hey, sis. So. A lot of what this has to do with joy is a few things. Number one, in 2020, black voters turned out in massive numbers and moved uh, an agenda that we wanted to see in terms of change happening in this country. And actually, um, what we're seeing is that there's not been uh, the agenda that we want to see moving forward from the economy to health care to voting rights. Uh, there were a lot of promises made that are still yet to be uh, delivered on. I think the second thing, Joy, that's really important for us to pay attention to here is that you know, for a lot of people, abortion is an economic issue. It's not an ideological issue. And while people may have personal feelings about whether or not they themselves uh, would participate in an abortion, uh, people understand the dollars and cents of what it means to be able to make decisions over your own life that make sense for you and your family and your economic status. And at the end of the day, Joy, ideology doesn't lead here. And that is why Republicans are having such a hard time on the campaign trail with this issue. It's because they're not talking about it in terms of dollars and cents. And that is the way that we understand it. Yeah, I mean, if you think about what they are talking about, Latasha, you know, Tudor Dixon, uh, who is the Republican nominee for Michigan governor, she's out there saying that rape victims and a child born of rape could form a bond. This is a good thing uh, to force young women who've been raped to have a baby. You've got Herschel Walker attacking the climate bill, saying we have too many trees or enough trees. Arizona, you have Blake Masters, you know, taking and scrubbing his website to try to take off the stuff about banning abortion and banning even contraception. Dr. Oz, um, you know, saying if he, you know, attacking John Fetterman's health. You have J.D. Vance going on and on. You know, I could just go on. J.D. Vance appearing with a podcaster who once said that feminists need rape. I mean, it, it, it seems that at this point, you spent a lot of time on the road talking with voters. One party seems to be so out there that I wonder if they're even getting a hearing or whether voters are just scared and thinking, dissatisfied or not, I'm voting for the other side. You know, I think there's three things. One, I think that this speaks of the reeks of desperation. They are desperate. They have gone too far. And instead of actually pulling back, they're actually even going further, which is hurting them. That's why what you saw is you start to seeing the scrubbing of websites. You start seeing the changing of positions of, of some certain re Republicans. Um, but because at the end of the day, what they thought is this playbook that Trump used, which was using lies, literally being able to mislead the public, that that in itself was going to be enough. And so they felt some power like, let's go a little bit deeper and it's not working particularly when you're looking at this issue around abortion rights they are losing ground tremendously around that and so i think that that's one issue i think the second issue is people are sick and tired of that you just can't have a sound bite and that's enough anymore people want what i call the janet jackson principle what have you done for me lately people on all sides want to really understand what is the party going to do for them i don't think that is going to be enough even the republican party to actually just continue to have to, to, to have these 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 sayings that there's that they know it's not true. They don't stand with that. They can just agitate, um, agitate the base. And then the third thing is what they've been consistent around is that they don't stand for anything, that they are the party of anti-freedom. They are the party of, party of anti-rights. It's so interesting that the party that says that we need smaller government you wants to seek to use government to actually infringe upon everybody's rights. And so I think that there's an inconsistency with their message. And I believe that they're going to pay a price for that in the midterm. And I want to let you both comment on this. I'm going to start with you, though, Latasha, because you, the other thing they're doing is saying, you know, we'll just make it harder to vote. Uh, you have in Florida now, last week, Governor DeSantis, he has this, these election police. Uh, it was announced last week they're in the process of arresting 20 former felons, mostly in South Florida, for voter fraud in the 2020 election. Several of them who were arrested uh, as part of this crackdown were notified by official government entities that they could vote, that they were eligible to vote, according to actual court documents and interviews. And now they're being arrested by, Donald, by uh, DeSantis' election police. 
how frightened are people, particularly in states like Florida, that essentially their right to vote is going to subject them to arrest? Because that's his strategy. So, you know, I always talk about that. If you look historically in America of how voter suppression, there's always been three strategies. It's one, first strategy has always been centered around restricting access to the ballot. Second, it's been around creating a culture of fear. And third, has been about weaponizing the administrative process. We saw DeSantis do that in Florida where he's established this voter fraud a voter fraud office for $1.1 million that he set aside. But these people who actually registered, they received documents from the county. So there's a tactic to actually create fear so others will not dare to take advantage of this expanded right that people on the ground, like my friend Desmond Mead and others, actually have fought for in 2018 and actually got passed with the restoration of folks of or formerly incarcerated people in that state. So this is what this is a tactic of. It is to create a culture of fear so people who have been pushed out of the process will not engage for it. And Elisa, I want you to comment on that too, but I also want, because you know we can't know what people need unless we have data. And I, I think what you're doing in terms of getting this data is so important. So you can talk about this, what's happening in Florida, but also talk about this data that you're you know, pulling together in a way that is really profound. I've never seen anything of this size and scale. Well, we really appreciate that, Joy. And yes, at the Black to the Future Action Fund, we ran the largest recurring poll of Black adults in the country with over 6,000 Black adults being polled over the course of a year, trying to understand people's policy priorities, trying to understand people's experiences. But bigger than that, we wanted to understand the solutions that Black folks want to see coming from our government. And what's important about this poll, Joy, you're absolutely right, is that so many of our traditional polling methods really miss the nuance in Black communities. We make sure that we are getting to people who aren't included in traditional polls from our communities in order to kind of broaden out, right, what it is that our folks are experiencing. We find time and time again that what people are talking about is the most important issue is the economy. People want to see relief and recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. And we've been doing some research this year, and we found out that in many states uh, where COVID-19 dollars are coming from the federal government, they're not actually going to the things that they're supposed to be going to in states. Things like education relief, housing relief, uh, mortgage relief, right? They're not going to health care. They're going, you know, at least a third of those dollars are going to policing yeah. and law enforcement. That's a challenge. The other thing I'll say, Joy, is that, again, Republicans right now are the party of no proposals and no policies. And Black yeah. communities and Black voters know exactly what it is that we want to see. We want to yeah. see ongoing relief and recovery pandemic. Well, I mean, listen, I took the poll. I think it's so important that people get data and, that, and you give data. So when you have the opportunity to take a survey like this, please do it. Okay, look, my sisters are going to stay with me. Latasha and Elise are going to stick around because guess what we're going to do after the break? We're going to play the one of the week and that is next.